for early October in Wisconsin is definitely, well, I, I think it varies, but for us on this property, we have some like herd management too. Um, so goal for this trip was to put a few does in the freezer, um, try and get that buck to doe ratio or a little closer than it is right now. This property is my father's side of the family's. Um, my grandfather um, purchased the property with my dad and his sibling. I think this is a great representative of Wisconsin deer hunting culture. Um, we have the deer camp, you know, the classic log cabin with the wood burner inside. And Early on, it was kind of I would come out here and help out. Um, we'd chop wood for to use at the cabin, or you know, help Joe track deer out here. And slowly but surely, um, it kind of transitioned into like we were able to hunt a weekend or two a year. You know, and then the more time we put in, and um, I've been able to spend quite a bit more time out here the last three or four years. Historically, this time of year, um, on a farm like this, where we try and keep the pressure off super low, we will, you know, we'll get that one or two daylight cruisers um, that you kind of always have a chance at. So we're kind of like teetering the line between low impact and like kind of safe sits to um, shoot some does, but also like kind of right on the edge of not necessarily being aggressive, but still putting ourselves in position to, you know, potentially get one of those those daylight cruisers in early October. I guess that kind of shift from the traditional like gun hunting kind of came for me after I had graduated high school and kind of went to college. Started to question and wonder, well, why do we do the things we do? Uh, where do we? Why do we sit where we do? Um, <laughs> kind of analyze more about why that what makes this spot a good spot or what are some other good spots that could be you know played with the right wind or conditions a lot of that turning point was bringing jeff in i think and having having a professional come in and, and kind of someone who's seen a lot of different properties um, in a lot of different areas and give some suggestions on how we can kind of put ourselves and the deer in the right spot at the right time everything we're doing is matching the lay of the land and the way the deer are moving anyways so really concentrate on those access routes to okay. stand locations, the stand locations themselves, the mock scrapes at each one of the stand locations, and then you can get those water holes in too. So now we're to the point of like moving food sources to where we want them to be, right? Like doing, you know, TSI and things like that in areas where we want bedding to be. So it's almost instead of using what was here, okay, yeah, that exists here, but how can we make it better so that you know, we can access where we want to hunt, when we want to hunt, with the winds we want to hunt. We're really looking at it as more of like, a, say, a five-year plan. And it's like, what can we implement, you know, through some manpower and four-wheelers? Um, some of the stuff that we've done this year, we've already started to see it change um, how deer are using the property. Um, you know, we're pushing them to bed in an area that we want them to. We're allowing them to feed in an area that we want them to, that we can access for afternoon sits. That's a, that's a freaking shooter. I think he's on his, I think he's on his downward turn. You think? Yeah. You freshen it up, that's pa great. Past his prime. Definitely past his prime. <laughs> <laughs> so where do they seem to come up when you were They're coming up basically between me and the apple tree. So like here? Mm -hmm. Like a down here? Mm -hmm. Yeah, like right in, kind of right in this area. It's been mostly uh, evening daylight activity, which makes sense. I mean, we're bending on the other side. Well, guy wants to shoot a doe. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the place. Well, let's go kill some of them. I 
Hunting with Joe is a lot of fun. Um, obviously, we're really, really good friends. Um, but it's fun to hunt. You know, he has more time on this property than probably anybody, just because he loves to spend time on here. So it's fun to hunt specifically this property with him because of his intimate knowledge of like, you know, he spends so much time on here, whether it's deer hunting, turkey hunting, work weekends, whatever. It's like, you know, he knows a specific tree around a specific bend next to a specific trail. Um, so it's a lot of fun to spend time out here with him because of his knowledge of the property. This part of October is really kind of a, a strange time weather-wise because you just don't know what you're going to get. I mean, it's kind of being flexible and not being afraid to try something new. So we're sitting up on the North Ridge. Um, it's the middle of October, early October. And this is the plot that Jeff had talked to us about the first time he came out. Cleared a bunch of trees, um, opened up the canopy. Planted a plot up here. It's a little bit warm today, kind of unseasonably warm, and uh, anything can happen, I guess. We'll see. We had kind of our ideas of where we were going to sit and where we were going to go, and um, had some sets pre-hung from early season that we thought would be really nice. And then we get here, and the wind's coming from a totally unexpected direction, totally unexpected temperature. It seemed like when Jeff came in, he confirmed a lot of the stuff that we've been talking about for the last five years. Some of his ideas, they're kind of radical when you first think of it. It's like, we have this beautiful area on this hilltop, and it's like, let's cut everything down and put a food plot in. Well, why? And then you start to think about it in that aspect of the property, that side of it makes sense because you can have the bedding down below. season you got to get the old uh, butcher legs back this has been a super fun year and like this trip has been super fun because the last two years we've basically been working on developing this new whitetail pattern I think like a lab setting has its place and that's the initial buy-off right like when you whether you're building a jacket or a new camel pattern there's all these boxes that have to be checked we have patterns that we've developed in the past that worked well for whitetail but we didn't have a pattern that was built specifically for it. All of these criteria, like color palettes and micro and macro breakup and the ratios of that and, you know, body shape dispersion at engagement distances that are specific to whitetails and looking in the anatomy of a whitetail's eye, you know, all of that stuff is like the pre preliminary work and it has to be done. But what we're getting to do now is take the kind of the fruits of that labor and prove it out in the field to like where it matters the most. Because who cares if it works in the lab, right? Like it's got to work in the field. The culmination of that specter, um, our whitetail specific pattern, 